Welcome everyone. Thank you guys for joining us so much today. So today I'd like to start with saying sorry that the video at Youth Night didn't work out. I was doing my best, but we had some media issues and stuff. So um, I only ended up recording the end of the video, like the practice part where I asked them questions and they answer. So I never really got that part. But I would like to start off with saying thank you everyone for joining us today and um, I hope this video today speaks to you and um, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Sharing these videos are important so other people can hear the word. So we're going to begin in a bit reading our next two pages on Jesus' calling. And then we are going to go, <clears throat> sorry about that, into prayer requests. Um, but before we get into that stuff. I'm just going to give you guys a little telly on what the next few lessons are so you can get excited about those and make sure, once again, share this video with other people so they can get reached to. So today, to make it up to you guys for the last video about baptism not going so well, I am going to talk to you guys about heaven today. So we're going to learn about heaven, but before that, I'm going to give you a little teaser about the next the last few lessons in this book here. So the next lesson after that is going to be Got Integrity, which is going to be a YouTube video that I'm going to make. And then Promises Promises, I am planning on teaching that lesson to the Youth Night group, Stars for Seven group. So, and I will do my best to make sure that video Course. I can't promise that it will record all of it, but I will do my best so you guys can see that video. And once again, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And then before we get into our Jesus Calling book, then prayer requests. Also, if you have any prayer requests, please put them down in the comment section down below. Or if you agree with something, type amen in the comment section down below. Either way, just comment. I'd love to hear from you guys and your thoughts about these videos. Or you can just text me your thoughts about these videos. So, in a bit, we are going to start with, we're going to learn in this book, it's Senior High, Volume 1, and then after we're done this book, we're going to Senior High, Volume 2, and after that, I'm going to do my best to come up with a lesson that God gives me, and lessons from the Bible, which I have on my phone, which is what I always use for the Bible. So... The first series is going to be learning about what Jesus is A to Z. And we're going to learn about the love series. We're going to learn about what is love. So we're going to learn about how do we show love to others. What exactly is love? What does it mean to love somebody the way that God does? And we're going to get into the Beatitudes. And then we're going to get into walking with God like Abraham, Enoch, and Noah did. And then we're going to learn about leadership. The first lesson about leadership is going to be on the Christian duties. So what is our duty as Christians to lead? And then our next last lesson on leadership is going to be submission. And then we're going to learn about God empowerment. So we're going to learn about how we have empowerment inside ourselves through God, the empowerment that God gave us. And then we're going to learn about how can we empower others. So through the empowerment that God gave us, how do we empower others? And we're going to learn about that in uh, a long time from now. And then we're going to have three lessons on accountability. So we're going to learn about what exactly is accountability. Um, and then we're going to learn about God's plan for emotional pain in our lives, which I think that's going to be a really important lesson to learn about, especially for you, the, all the young people out there. We're going to learn about you're not alone. Alone? Sorry for that. Comfort and Jesus understands because God really does understand you. And then we're going to learn about choice and then rest. And then this last lesson in this book is not a series, but it's going to be Footprints on the Moon Never Give Up. And since we are going to be going into a new book soon, I am going to explain what B7 is about, the mission statement. And mental statement and product seven core values, which is a part of accountability, empowerment, and integrity. And in a few weeks, to 
yeah, like next week or so, we're going to learn about integrity, which I think is going to be a really important thing to learn about. I think even older people than some of you young people out there that always watch my YouTube videos um, will be impacted by it too. I think everybody can be impacted by integrity. And since I was teaching, I'm teaching about heaven today, I got one well, on my little shirt that says, in my school as it is in heaven. So, P7 clubs are student-led and student-driven opportunities for students to participate in a spiritually inspired relationship community serving project in their school. So, one main important thing uh, for P7 leaders to inspire into their group is serving others. And I really highly suggest if you can start a P7 club in your school, do it. If you can't, start a YouTube channel teaching about who Jesus is and what he did in your life. And if you share those videos with me, I'll be sure to share them on Facebook and Instagram. I'll make sure to tell my uh, subscribers about it too. So please, start. A, I suggest you guys to start a YouTube channel and a P7 Club too. Because I've seen multiple people loving these videos because it truly spoke to them it truly helped with what they're going through people from Nome, Bethel all over Alaska all over the Yukon all over the world pretty much have been truly inspired by these so if you can start a YouTube channel if you know about Jesus if you've been baptized received the Holy Ghost if you have a camera even a phone camera you can start a YouTube channel. Now let's continue on here. So the mission statement is to be at the forefront of creating an apostolic presence on the junior high and high school campus across North America and across the whole world. Now the mental statement is we accomplish our mission by equipping and empowering students to be leaders in their school as P7 missionaries engaging youth pastors to disciple, inspire, and pursue their students to unlock their faith in their school. So if you're a youth pastor watching, your goal for this is to inspire and direct your kids in um, your church that are you that have been in church for a while and have been baptized and received the Holy Ghost inspire them to unlock their faith in their school. Expressing the mission, purpose, vision, person, core values to the school administrator. Inviting junior high and high school campuses through P7 Bible Clubs. And even if you just open up a Bible in front of a small group of people or even a large group of people, that is still a P7 Club. And now we're going to go on to Project 7 Core Values. The core values of this is accountability. Take respect for our actions on and off campus that influence the lives of others. So even if we're off campus, we do our best to be Christ-like. Because we are an example to others. Even if you don't know this, people are watching you. People are watching you everywhere you go. And then it, there's also... Um, communication, show love to everyone through our words and actions. So maybe tell someone, oh, I love that outfit because maybe they're feeling down that day. Maybe they just need an encouraging word from somebody else. And there's also empowerment. Empower students to take involvement and give their best to the mission God has for their life. Integrity, to act with honesty and a character without composing the truth leadership to lead with courage in order to shape the future and then there's also relationship encourage relationship with god and with others and then there's community and a lot of you probably know about what community is basically is establish community among the student body and use that strength to impact the local community through serve pro service projects so maybe like one day Ask your principal or whatever and be like, hey, our club wants to give out free food because we want to serve our school. Or maybe we want to clean the gym floor after a basketball game. Maybe we want to help set up for a basketball game. 
Maybe you want to help set up for a holiday. Any way you can serve your school, do it. Even if you don't have a Project Seven Clubia, do it. Serve the school. And then the last one is community. Establish community among the student body and use that strength to incorporate the local community through some projects. Oh, sorry, I already read that to you guys. Um, so now, <coughs> excuse me, I'm still a bit sick, so please pray that I get a bit better. Let's read these two pages, so I'm gonna start with reading these two. I am the restorer and the life, all lasting life abundantly from me. People search for life in many wrong ways, chasing after fleeting pleasures according pa passions. And meanwhile, I freely offer abundant life to everyone who turns toward me. As you come to me, and take my yoke upon you. I fill you with my very life. This is how I choose to live in world, in the world. <coughs> Accomplish my purpose. This is also how I bless you with joy unspeakable and full of glory. And the joy is mine and the glory is mine. But I bestow them on you as you live in my presence, inviting me to fully in you. And that's from John 11, 25, Matthew 11, 28 through 29, First Peter 1, 8 through 9. And that's from the King James Version. And now let's read our last page for today. I love you for who you are, not for what you do. Many voices for control of your mind, especially when you sit in silence. You must learn to just say what is my voice and what is not. Ask my spirit to give you du this direction. Many of my children run around in circles trying to obey the vision voices directing their lives. This resurrection and permit for addition patterns of living. Do not fall into this trap. Walk closely with me each moment. Listening for my Direction and joining my companionship, resolve to let other voices tear you up in knots. My sheep know my voice and follow me wherever I lead. And that's from Ephesians 4 1 through 6, John 10 4. And that is it for the Jesus is Calling book today. I'm just gonna get a quick sip of water and then we're gonna learn about heaven. Who's ready to learn about heaven? Woo! Sorry, my voice is a bit off today. We're going to change the prayer request to the end. By the way, is it hard for you to imagine heaven without football? Without, it's just your favorite sport or drink? We sometimes joke about the things we think heaven must have. But when we get there, Jesus pursues will be all we, presence will be all we need. Now we're going on to our icebreaker. What food or drink would you describe as heavenly? Maybe it's Red Bull because you need energy sometimes uh, or you like the flavor. Maybe it's Monster. Maybe it's Coke. I don't know. There's so many drinks out there. You can go ahead and answer that question down below in the comment section. Now I'm going to uh, read to you Revelations 21 4 and you can find that in your guys' Bible too either on your phone or on a Bible Bible and again that's Revelations 21 4 Oof. and Revelations is a book that talks a lot about the end days and the end times and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. We will have problems here on earth, but we can praise God that someday our trials will be over forever. Now, at this time, I am going to change it from going to the end to take your prayer requests right now. And you can write them down in the comment section as I list some prayer requests some people gave me. 
uh, my friend who wants to get back into church, my friend who still has seizures, my friend who has seven, seven club, Vicky Harrison for healing and strength. <coughs> to be able to sing again, take the girl before America for in her family, schools, teachers, families, and students all over the world. If anybody else has prayer requests, please put them down in the comment section down below and I will be praying for you. Jesus, please help my friend who wants to get back into church to get back into church right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Help my friend who's been having seizures that those seizures go away. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, help my friend who wants to start a peace and club that she starts that peace and club. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, pray. F I pray for Taylor Glover for a miracle for in her family right now that they receive that miracle. In Jesus' name, I pray for schools, teachers, families, and students all over the world that you touch them and that they would hear your word and your voice. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Amen. Now let's continue on. We're going to go on to our parable. Fill a wide mouth jar with water up to you, about an inch away from the top. Cover the mouth of the jar with a napkin and secure it with rubber band. I would like you to do this on your own time if you could so you can write this down in a little notepad or something and you can zoom back to when I first started so you know what to do. Place a house key on top of the napkin. And I'm going to give you more instructions to write down. The pencil must touch the water in the jar. When it is poked through the napkin, continue until the key <coughs> falls into the water. The object of that game is not to just be the last person to put your hole in the napkin before the keys fall. And you can do that on your own time if you'd like to. Everyone wants to go to heaven, but not everyone knows that Jesus is the one and the only key that unlocks the pearl gates. Now we're going to read Philippians 2.12. Just give me a moment to find it, and you can also find it on your own Bibles. Again, that's Philippians 2.12. I'm going to read it. Wherefore, my brother, brethren, as you have... Out always obeyed not as in my presence only but now much more in my abun abundance work out your own salvation with fear and trembling we should work out our salvation see it to complete with reservation toward god and the truth outlined in his word only then Will we one day see Jesus face to face? And if you want to see Jesus face to face, type, I want to see him face to face one day in the comments. Now we're going on to present. And present helps you with the present day, so like it gives you advice for present day. If you've gone to church all your life, <coughs> you've probably at some point heard it. In heaven, we praise God forever and ever. It would be like never-ending church service, or maybe it will even be like never-ending camp service. Just give me more money. In some regards, this is true. We will praise God throughout eternity, and it will be more wonderful than anything we can ever imagine. But when we're honest, most of us have to admit that as good as any given church service might be, our stomachs start growling after a while. And any drink strains away, we start thinking about all the homework that's due tomorrow. Comfort early to the earthly body. It's hard for us to grasp how truly amazing heaven will be. Now we're going to Colossians 3, 1 through 2. And you can look that up on your own Bibles as well. Give me a moment to find it. If ye then be raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Some people can't imagine heaven without their favorite sport, or pet, or hobby. 
but the Bible engages us to get our minds off the earthly treasures. Heaven isn't a place where we engage in all the things we enjoy here on earth. In heaven, we will know and experience in the presence of God and no earthly enjoyment will be able to compare. Sometimes we get distracted with planning fun vacations, building our resumes for getting a job, and buying the latest technology gadgets that we can that we can't find it in ourselves to get all excited about heaven. We have heard for us to be honestly say we're ready for something better, right? Now we're going to Matthew sixteen twenty five. And get your books ready to turn to John afterwards. Because we're going to get into John after that. And again, that's Matthew 16, 25. Whoever will save his life shall lose it. And whoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. And now we're going to First John. 2.15, again that's First John 2.15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the word, world, the love of the Father is not in him. It's not hard to see that our world is growing into chores, but thankfully we don't have to worry about that. This world is not our home. We are supposed to do. We are supposed to be comfortable here. At the same time, the spirit that resurrected Jesus from the dead can resurrect us to a beautiful eternal home where sin, death, and pain can exist. Now let's turn to Romans 8, 11. Just give me a moment to find it. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mental body by his spirit that dwelleth in you. First of all, we will see Jesus face to face, like I said before. Now let's turn to Revelation 22, 4. And you can find that in your Bibles too. Just give me a moment to find it. Again, yeah, that's Revelation 22, 4. And I want to read it to you guys. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. We will know the God who instantly loves us in a deeper, more abundant way than we ever been able to imagine. Now we're moving on to practice, where you will be able to answer some questions in the comment section down below. What do you think of when you think of heaven after what we talked about today? What do you think heaven will look like? Where do you get the most of your ideas and beliefs about heaven from? Where you can get most of your ideas and beliefs about heaven from the Bible is something you can answer for that one. How can having a wonderful life on earth have a negative effect on our desire to see heaven? Hmm. Very interesting question. What are some earthly treasures that might be a distraction to us? Maybe a phone, a TV, um, a game. In what ways are Charles' blessings and degrees? What do you imagine it would be like the first time you see Jesus? Maybe you run up to him and be all excited to meet him? Uh, who knows? Now let's get into prayer. Jesus, we want to spend eternity with you. Help us to become more and more heavenly minded, pulling away from the eye of this world and pressing forward toward that day when we see you face to face. We praise you for our salvation and for the beautiful privilege of knowing you. You are the key that opens heaven's doors.
Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now if you can, pick up a copy of John Milley's Allusion to the Preparing Process to Read and watch for symbolizations referring to the Christian's journey to heaven. And please try and do that this week. And that's pretty much it. I'm just going to go over some questions from the question part again. And you can answer these down in the comment section down below while I ask you them. We should work our observation. See to complete with blank toward God, embracing the truth outlined in his word. And you can look to Philippians 2.12 to help you out for that. The Bible encourages us to get our minds off blank treasures. And you can look at Colossians 3, 1 through 2 to help you out for that. Heaven isn't a place where we blank in all the things we enjoy on earth. And the reason why I'm saying blank is because I want you guys to fill in that blank in the comment section down below. In heaven we will know... <coughs> in heaven we will know and experience the presence of God, and no blank enjoyment will be able to compare. We have so much and want so much more here on earth that it's hard for us to honestly say we're ready for something blank. This world is not our home. We are supposed to be blank here. The same spirit that blank Jesus from the dead can resurrect us to a beautiful eternal home where sin, death, and pain can exist. And you can look to Romans 8, 11 to help you out with that. Best of all, we will see blank face to face. Revelation 22, 4. You can look to help you for that. Next question. What do you think of when you think of heaven? Which is a question we just went over. What do you think heaven will look like? Where do you get most of these ideas and beliefs about heaven from? How are you having a wonderful life on earth can be a negative effect. And our desire to see heaven or some earthly treasures that might distract us and what ways are trials blessings and degrees what do you imagine it will be like for the first time seeing jesus and then remember your plus for this week if you can pick up a copy of john Bryan's lines to the Bar's prophecy to read and watch for some of the to christ's journey to heaven a christian's journey to heaven and next week we are going to learn about integrity so make sure to share this video with people so they can next time learn about gut integrity and after that i'm planning on this lesson at youth night we're going to learn about promises promises and if you don't remember the lesson that we're going to learn about this book you can look back to that and next week we're going to go over our next two reading our next two pages of jesus is calling to so about two more lessons in this book. And then we got this book, which has really good lessons in it, too. So I hope to see you guys next time. Have a great week. And remember, in your school, as it is in heaven. Peace, seven. You guys rock. See you next time. Bye.